In this video, we will learn how to use the virtual rotor kit to do balancing of a rotor in one plane. This is a project in collaboration with Dr. Luis Medina, who works at the University Austral de Chile, and he is the developer of the software, Dr. Euro Casanova at the University of Bio Bio Concepcion Chile, and myself, and I work at Florida International University. Let's visit the Virtual Rotor Kit Project website. The mission of this project is to develop a costless computational application to emulate experiment in Rotor Kit. You can read more about the project here in the outline. You can here download the software. And finally, you can find some references. If you have any questions, you can always contact Dr. Medina. This is the contact information. In the following example, the virtual rotor kit is required to balance a rotor when it runs at 1000 RPM constant speed and the original unbalanced configuration is unknown. The test and the solution will be based on the coefficient influence method. The steps of these methods are the following. The first step is to do a reference run and we will collect original vibration due to the unbalance. We will collect amplitude and phase data and this is a measurement of the vibration we like to attenuate. As a second step, we will apply a trial weight and it can be chosen arbitrarily. Amplitude and phase. We will collect the response. This represents a measurement of the rotor sensitivity to rotor imbalance. We will compare those two measurements. And when we subtract these two amplitudes and the phase angle, we will find the effect of applying this trial weight. The influence factor is determined as the response of the trail weight we calculated in the previous step, divided by the trail weight. So this is the formula for the influence factor. Then we can calculate the correction weight, which will be the initial response divided by the influence factor. We also have to calculate the angle where the correction weight is has to be placed. And finally, we will do a validation run to verify if the balancing solution is satisfactory by comparing the vibration of this validation run with the initial amplitude for the unbalanced rotor. Similar to a real rotor test rig, constraints will be addressed when the solution is implemented. To add any trail weight to the virtual rotor kit correction plane, the following constraints have to be taken into account. Available trail weight sets values are 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and so on grams. The correction plane has 16 holes, as shown here in this figure, and they are equal spaced at 22.5 degrees. Only one trail weight per hole is admitted and up to four trail weights can be placed at once. Let's now run the software to do our example. This is the first window that we uh, see when we run the software. We apply OK. The second window is the setup window. We have four tabs here. The first tab allows you to put it unbalanced at the system for the first run, we want to measure the unbalance as is. So we will put zero for the trial weight. This number will identify the run. The first run could be set up zero, but any run after, we will change this number to one, two, three, etc., so that we do not overwrite our results. Here you can see the constraints of the software that we already read through in the previous slide. This number represents the unbalanced configuration. Currently, there are up to five possible unknown unbalanced configurations. They are named one in Roman numbers two, three, four, and none. The non option is to have a perfectly balanced rotor, which is actually not a possibility in real life. 
Each unbalanced configuration is a static unbalance located at the correction plane and is unknown to the user. Unknown means that the user do not have any information in advance about the magnitude, neither the position of the static unbalance that has to be added in those holes to attenuate that unbalance. For this example, we will choose the configuration one. In this second tab, the user can explore how variation in the stiffness and dampens of support coefficients could modify the unbalanced response. For this example, we will not modify these coefficients and we'll leave it like zero. In this beta version, the change could be up to 10%. For these zero values, the rotor response sensitivity respect to the support coefficient variation will not be addressed. Then we have the third option. Here we can set up the operational speed of the rotor. In, for our example, we will set up it to 1000. To tune in the velocity, you can always click here and you move slower right here. Here we reach the 1000 RPM. And this is the ramp up rate. That's how the rotor will accelerate. And this is the ramp down rate. This is how the rotor will deaccelerate. We can leave it as is, which is the default. Here we can select how much time we want our rotor to be in the steady state. We can leave five seconds. The last tab is the output. Here we have the question if we like to see the visualization of our run, we can say yes. If we like to see the orbit being plotted, we can say yes. And if we want to save our results, let's say yes. Then we click process. We get this little notification and we click OK. And we get these two new windows. We will start our run. And now the rotor is accelerating. Here we can visualize our run. This window comes up because we told the system that we like to visualize our run. After a few seconds, our system reached the steady state at 1000 RPM and it will stay five seconds in that steady state. And now it calculated the amplitude. Please note that the amplitude that the software calculates is RMS amplitude in microns and is 3.47. The phase angle is 54.15. Please note that the 16.67 Hertz is equivalent to the 1000 RPM that we set up our run. Now the system is deaccelerating and eventually will stop. Now you see how the rotor is almost stopped. And we finished this run. As a reference, I'd like to recall that the amplitude of vibration can be quantified in several ways. It can be quantified from peak to peak or at peak level, which is from peak to the equilibrium position, or it could be measured as the RMS amplitude. The peak to peak amplitude is important when we are analyzing a machine for clearance consideration and the peak level gives us the amplitude respect to the equilibrium position. At the end, it does not matter which value you use, but you can use the RMS amplitude or the peak. It's just very important to be consistent and always use the same formula for comparison purposes. The virtual rotor kit calculates the RMS value, which is relevant measure of amplitude because it both takes the time history of the response into account and give an amplitude value that is directly related to the energy content of the response. It represents the area under half of a cycle. This is the formula. And for a sine wave, this formula yields 0 0.707, the amplitude. Now that the test has finished, now we click the exit button. And we have this plot window. We can plot our run. This is the initial orbit when the rotor is accelerating. We reach the steady state. And now 
the rotor start deaccelerating. This represents the two components of our amplitude in x and y direction. And we can click the quick button. And the system asks us if we like to run again. We will say yes because we want to place a trail weight. We completed the first step, which is collect reference in chronicles vibration amplitude and phase data for the unbalanced rotor. The RMS amplitude is 3.47 microns and the phase angle is 54.15 degrees. This value is measure the vibration in its original condition. Now we will go to step two, which is applying a trail weight and collect the response. For this example, we will put one gram at zero degrees. So let's go back to the software. So we come back to the setup window. We will set up this run as one. We leave the original unbalanced configuration as is, and we place our trail weight in one gram at zero degrees. We leave the supports set up as is. The rotor speed, we have to set it as 1000 again. Here, 1000 RPM is my operational speed. And the output here, I can say that I don't need to see the visualization or yes, I don't need to see the orbit. So, but I like to save my answer. When I save my response, this is going to be saved as an ASCII alt text file. And I click process. Now we click start. And again, we start the accelerating process. It reached the steady state, 1000 RPM. Now calculated the amplitude and the phase angle. This amplitude is two to the original unbalance plus the trail weight that we apply to the system. Now we have five seconds in the steady state and after the system start deaccelerating. And eventually the system stops. We know that the selected trail weight was one gram at zero degrees and the collected data was 11.61 microns at 13.34 degrees. Now let's do some calculations. We want to compare the initial response and the response obtained when we place a trail weight. We will subtract those two vectors. We will get the isolated effect of placing that trail weight. We have to decompose those two vectors in order to do the operation. We decompose the vector in horizontal or real components and the vertical or imaginary components. We subtract the real part and the imaginary part and the amplitude will be the square root of these two components squared. We also can calculate the phase angle and that will be the inverse tangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. As a magnitude, we get that the isolated amplitude of the trail weight is 9.26 microns and this angle is in the fourth quadrant. Therefore, we can write it as a negative 0 0.83 degrees or as a positive angle when we add 360 degrees, then we have 359.17 degrees. The next step is to calculate the correction weight. First, we have to calculate the influence coefficient. This is the equation that we will use. We use the isolated amplitude of the trail weight divided by the mass that we place as a trail weight. We have 9.26 microns divided by one gram, and we subtract both phase angle. To calculate the correction weight, we will have the initial unbalanced amplitude divided by our influence coefficient. This is how we calculate the phase angle for our correction weight. We input our numbers and we get that the correction weight will be 0 0.37 grams at 235 degrees. In order to implement our 
solution, we have to comply with our constraints. So these are the available weights that we can use. And the correction plane has 16 holes, 22.5 equal space it. The solution cannot be implemented. There is neither 0 0.37 grams available and there is no position in the plane of correction of 235 degrees to place a trail weight. To overcome those limitations, one practical solution consists in expressing our correction weight as a sum of two unknown weights placed close to the ideal solution that we calculated. So we have here a vector equation, and this vector equation can be expressed as two scalar equations. Again, we input the values, and we get our two equations with two unknowns, m1 and m2. We solve this system of equations, and we get that mass 1 is 0 0.23 grams, and mass 2 is 0 0.16 grams. However, there is neither 0 0.23 grams or 0 0.16 grams available to place in the rotor. The closest one is 0 0.2 grams. So we can propose a solution that as M1 is 0 0.2 grams at 225 degrees and M2 0 0.2 grams at 247.5 degrees. Let's try this to see if that attenuates our initial unbalance. This will be our run number two. We leave the unbalanced configuration as one. We have 0 0.2 grams at 225 degrees and we have 0 0.2 grams at 247.5 degrees. The supports we leave it as is and then we have the speed has to be 1000 RPM. I will leave the ramp up rate the same and the ramp down rate also the same. And I will leave five seconds and the output plot the orbits. And I would like to my measures to be safe. And I click process. I get this little window and I click OK and I can start running my system. Now the rotor start accelerating. I reach steady state at 1000 RPM. Now the system calculates the RMS amplitude and the phase angle. Now after five seconds in the steady state, the system start deaccelerating and eventually the rotor will stop. We click exit and we can plot the solution. We get a very similar graph as before. However, this number is much smaller. The collected data is for the amplitude 0 0.18 microns at 260.58 degrees. When we compare the initial amplitude with this amplitude, we can say that there is a significant amplitude reduction. When we do the ratio between the last amplitude recorded and the initial amplitude recorded, we see that the last amplitude is 5% of the initial. So we have almost 95% reduction of our amplitude. Therefore, we can confirm that the balancing process was satisfactory. For further information about rotor balancing, you can check the following reference.